Hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna start it like uh, that show. Good morning. What did he say? Good morning. Good good evening and good night. <laughs> the Truman Show. Oh man. So Brandy, um, our Galactic Star Chart reader is on today. We're gonna remove the mute from your mic so that you can talk. But um, get your thing off of mute, girl. Hi. So, wow. <laughs> so over the years, you've been teaching me about galactic star charts, and it's been just wonderful to get to know you. You're such a pleasant personality. I swear to God. I told my sister this morning, I said, I think she's here to teach me manners because you're so like gracious <sighs> and thoughtful in the way that you talk and present and um, so studious. I'm like, you, I don't know, the way that you put things together. Um, you've been working really hard to really expand on these galactic star charts, like with your diagrams and posters and just things to make it more um, palatable for people rather than just this raw data sheet. So I just commend you for being so dedicated to this area of study. You know, like they say, master of all, you know, uh, what is it? Jack of all trades, master of none. But like you've become a master in this area. So whenever she pops on, we say, hey, it's our favorite galactic star chart reader. So let that everybody is know. so sweet, Erica, that you really you've been such a beautiful support. It's meant so much. Thank you so much. That is the sweetest. You're welcome. It's yeah. true. It's true. It, it, it's. I don't know. We were just discussing how we met you just a few years ago, and everybody is really grateful. Dab is, is grateful. Terry, Jonathan, like we were all grateful for how you took such care and going over our charts for us. It was amazing. I think um, I made I've a mistake. Charts, but I didn't <laughs> understand them before. So, and remember, I think I made a mistake. I got dates mixed up on on you guys the first time. Just pointing the first that out. Time. It was, that was got a little messy for a second. But she had eight eight stacked in her face and she got them all done. I it was did. amazing. Though. I did. There were eight people. Yeah. Yeah. That was fun. It um, was. I'm excited today. I wanted to kind of go over um some things and basically just kind of simplify, backtrack a little bit. I noticed that a lot of people are moving into some of this information and maybe not having a foundation of traditional astrology and what it means. And so I put together a little video to kind of ease us in and baby step and simplify the natal chart so that I'm making three videos, three sections, if you'll allow me to do so. And kind of start, the first place I want to start is just taking a look at what the heck is astrology anyway? What is it? What does it even mean? Why, hello there. You made it. Welcome aboard. Today we are going to talk about astrology. I would like to present to you some super cool visuals just to give you a baseline for what astrology is. This maybe is for newbies or anybody maybe overwhelmed by the natal chart and all of the symbology going on here. What the heck is it? And it may be maybe you will find interest in this even if you are a skilled astrologer so what the heck is astrology anyway it's the study of celestial movements and positions and their influence on earth and society and human psychology galactic astrology is this careful study of the fixed stars and the telling influence that they have of a being's galactic experience. So to take us on this journey today, I wanted to take a look at the microcosm. And, and let's, these are images of the atomic movements 
with the nucleus and the electrons moving around. Here's another. This model may be outdated because as we know, this science is quickly changing and soon I'm sure this will be antique and an old way of looking at atomic movements. But just for the sake of our conversation, the atom is comprised of protons and neutrons and electrons ah! around the outside. These electrons... Ah! <laughs> it's okay. Thank you. You're welcome, baby. Thank you. I appreciate it, Mama. I love you, baby. You're doing great. The, thank yeah. you. That's awesome. <laughs> These... Protons and neutrons in the center are the nucleus and the electrons are what is spinning around the outside and they're creating a bit of a shell. And I don't know if you remember this, but way back in the day when we were learning about chemistry, these atoms, some of them are stable and some of them are not stable. And it depends on the number of electrons that are in the shell. Each shell has a specific number of electrons that are required to be in its orbit in order for it to be a stable atom. And then if it's not, then it kind of cruises around and waits for something to bond to. This is how we get matter. This is how we get molecules. For instance, hydrogen here on the left, oops, bound with oxygen will make a water molecule. And the water molecules, this is a really beautiful graphic. Again, is this is pretty much what we're made of too, you guys. The water molecules begin to form. Here's another really cool atomic structure of gold. I just wanted you to get, uh, or molecular structure, I wanted you just to kind of feel into the microcosm of movements and what creates matter. It's these orbits and these stable or instable orbits that are pulling or pushing these subatomic particles towards one another. Now, I just find it fascinating how much this subatomic nature reflects the motions and the movements of the galaxy itself. It's surprisingly similar. Everything is spinning and cycling around one another. So you can see how it's very similar. Everything has a purpose. Everything is being drawn to and pushed towards or pulled towards another heavenly body, another celestial body. And together they make something up. They're influencing. No matter what celestial body we're looking at here, guaranteed it has an influence on another aspect of the heavens, of the cosmos. If we're on earth and looking up, then this is what that motion looks like. At times I swear, oh, I feel like I can, I feel like I can feel the earth moving. Like I'm riding this beautiful, beautiful planet through space. I'm just, I really do feel that. I don't know if any of you do. I was hoping for you to feel that because we're going to kind of ground this a little bit into what astrology is and our natal charts. So these natal charts, basically the, at the very moment you were born, the natal chart is a snapshot of coordinates. It contains the location of planets, constellations, fixed stars, nebulas, stargates, that you are directly aligned to and that were in the sky at the moment you were born. It's basically a map of your soul's journey. Everything that was an influence upon your coming into existence here on earth. So 
let's just kind of simplify. I may be repeating myself again. We're going for simplification. We're going for baseline, for foundation. What the heck is astrology? Let's talk about this natal chart. So this natal chart is loaded with keys and information. The three main things that you will find on your natal chart are your planets, your houses, and the zodiac constellations. In order to kind of help give us a visualization, I literally put images of planets upon the planets that were in my chart. Here we're looking at my chart. So what do the planets represent when we're talking about astrology? The planets are you. They're different aspects of you. They're parts of your personality. They're like the actor when we're looking at astrology. Another part and another piece of the pie here, piece of the puzzle is this natal chart is divided into sections. This is called houses. Your houses are different areas of your life or the set. Each house has a different meaning. We'll go over it. Lastly, around the very outside of your chart are these little symbols. This is the zodiac signs. This is like the costume, but it's like the mood that you're in, the mood that you're bringing to that area of your life when you are standing in that aspect of yourself, depending on what planet we're looking at. Let's talk about this a little bit. Like what do all these different planets mean? What do you mean different types of my personality? Well, every single planet holds an archetypal aspect of your personality. For simplification sake, we could really dive into what each of these planets means and what it symbolizes when it comes to you. However, for the moment, we're going to keep it simple. So Pluto, this is the part of yourself where I am empowered. This is power and control. This often has very intense transformative powers. This is the symbol for Pluto at the top of this circle. If you see it in your natal chart, this is Pluto. The next planet is Neptune. Look how beautiful. Woo, that is a pretty planet. So Neptune, this is the part of yourself I dream. These are your ideals, the compassionate part of yourself, the etheric part of yourself. This is like your utopian ideals for your community. The next planet is Uranus. Ooh, that is a pretty planet too. This is the planet of freedom. I evolve, change. This is like where the hero's journey begins, Uranus. This is the symbol for Uranus. When you see this symbol again in your natal chart, you know we're talking about Uranus. That's the placement for Uranus. Saturn. Now Saturn is a little intense. This is the part of yourself that learns responsibilities. It can be a little tough. This part of yourself, it is where, again, you're learning lessons. I achieve goals, ambitions, limitations. The next planet is Jupiter. Look at how pretty that is. Oh my gosh, that's such a beautiful planet. So Jupiter, this is the part of yourself that is in constant growth and expansion into abundance and good fortune. This is when you are standing in your true authentic self and you are following your purpose. The next planet is Mars. Mars is intense also. This is where the warrior aspect of you is. This is I act. This is motivation, aggression. This is catalyzing energy, Mars. Venus, Venus never quite looks as pretty as I think it's going to, but Venus, now this is the planet of love and attraction. I love. Now, this does not just have to be you and what you love. This is the qualities within yourself that others are drawn and love about you. These are the qualities about you that 
others are attracted to. This could be an inner beauty, an outer beauty. This could be a number of things, but this is the part of yourself that you probably love the most. Mercury. Whoa! That is a pretty planet. That is so cool looking. It just looks like it's been through quite a bit, that one. And Mercury is a planet of communication and intellect, I think. So this is going to be your processing. This is going to be how you're thinking about things. This is going to be how you're interpreting things. This is going to be how you're communicating with people, how you're saying things. The communicator. This is more of like the verb part of you. You are thinking, you are communicating. So not only do we look at the planets in the solar system, but we also take into consideration your moon. And what does your moon symbolize? Your moon is the part of you that holds the deepest feelings, your feminine principles, emotions, the nurturing aspect of yourself. This is really the part of yourself that holds all of your intuition and your emotional dialogue. We also will look at the sun. Now the sun is holding masculine principles of yourself, your personality, your ego. I am. This is pretty much probably how others will see you. This is your outward personality. So not only do we look at planets, the moon, the sun, there's certain points on the natal chart that we too will take a look at depending on where they are. And in this case, I just wanted to point out one such point on a chart, which would be found right here. I don't know if you can see my pointer, but this is your rising sign. And so this is your ascendant. This is where you're moving towards. This is what you are becoming. So when we look at all of the alignments that are lining up with your ascendant, that's going to indicate the direction that you're moving towards. So you can always see there are so many layers to astrology, so many things to take into consideration just when looking at the planets, just when looking at the planets. So the planets have a, have meaning on your natal chart and the houses have a meaning on the natal chart. Your houses are divided up into 12 different areas of your life. Now, when you're looking at your natal chart, anything on the bottom half of your natal chart usually is going to indicate intra per, interpersonal dialogue, the things that are going on inside of yourself, your interpersonal relationships. When on the upper part of the chart is going to indicate and leave clues to your intrapersonal relationships, your relationships to those around you outside of yourself. Let's run through these houses super quick. Your first house, this area of the natal chart, any alignments in here is going to be reflecting the area of I am your first house self beginnings, your first impressions, your identity, your ego and your approach to life. The second house, this is the area of your life I have. What do I have? Personal finances, possessions, your earning ability, money. The second house is going to refer to the area of your life where you're thinking and learning to communicate, your mental activity, communication, siblings, early childhood, social activity. The fourth house is your home life. I nurture your home, your parents, roots, inner security. The fifth house, I create. This is an area of romance, creativity, children, fun. The sixth house, I serve, I do. Your daily life, your work, your health, service, self-improvement. So these are kind of actions. These are your, what, your purpose. This is, these are like purpose, purpose part of your life. I connect. This is when you're beginning to build relationships with people, marriage, contracts, discovering equality amongst your connections. The next one is the eighth house. 
I exchange. This is when your connections now are beginning to get a, a giving and receiving. You're merging sexual relations, joint ventures, assets, mystery, inheritances. The ninth house, now you're out, you're going, you're chasing that wisdom, chasing that knowledge. This is the explorer part of your life where you're traveling, seeking wisdom, higher education, philosophy. The 10th house. Now this is the, this is the go-getter part of you. I achieve. This is the outer world career, the area of your life where you're achieving status, reputation, taking power. This is the CEO area of your life, your career. The next is the 11th house. This is the area of your life where you're aspiring to be. You, this could be coming through with your friends, groups, goals, your aspirations. And lastly, this is the full circle, the 12th house. This is, I know, the area of your life where everything is synthesizing. Everything's kind of coming together. Your spiritual life solitude, institutions, transcendence. So you can see how once we start kind of taking note of all of these variables, they begin to create different personality types and different ways of viewing and seeing and taking all of these into consideration. It gives very clear indicators and very um, concise layers of our psychology and how we interact with ourselves and the world around us. So we've looked at the planets. We have a basic understanding for planets. We have a basic understanding of the houses. Next time, we're going to go over the zodiacs. The zodiac is the third main ingredient in, within the natal chart. Main ingredient. There are other ingredients in your natal chart, but the three main ones are the planets, the house, and the zodiac. The zodiac is our mood. This is the costume. So the mood that we bring to that area of our life. And not only do we look at that, those are the three items that we look at for traditional astrology, for galactic astrology. When we're seeking and looking at your traditional natal charts, we're looking at all of the fixed stars. We'll take into consideration your natal chart, your galactic astro chart, www.galacticastrochart.com. And an understanding of these cosmic locations. What is their history? What's the galactic history? What's the purpose? What's the significance of having a galactic center in your chart? What's the significance of having Antares in your chart? These stargates, well, they give clues to your star stories. They give clues to your galactic origins your mission here on earth, your most recent star life, your soul's origin, history, challenges. Are you an angelic here specifically to raise the frequency on earth? Are you a star seed that remembers clearly an aquatic life? Or have you had experiences with lioness beings? Have you had experiences or have feelings of having canine frequencies or interdimensional beings? Our galaxy is holding infinite number of species in it. Do not be surprised if you have memory or if you have a friend or if you have some type of connection or feeling or resonance with these stars because this is your backyard. That star system, those nebulas, those fixed stars, that's your backyard. If you want to learn more about galactic astrology, reach out to ourgalacticstory.com. Thank you so much for listening. I super love you. Have a beautiful day.
presentation. Okay. That Erica, was amazing, so Randy. For... I like that. Thank you. And thanks for giving me the time and space. I hope that it makes sense. And I hope it allowed for just a different way of feeling into what, why those planets are important. Those microcosm movements are just replicating and they're mirroring these microcosm movements and we're in the middle. So of course there's influences. Of course these heavenly bodies are singing and pushing and pulling on us now. Um, all of that said, thanks so much for letting me share that. And I love and appreciate you more than you will ever know, Erica. Um, you've been nothing but sweet and kind and supportive. And it's always a treat to talk with you. It's always a treat to watch you, watch Terry, watch you explore, watch what you're doing. It's been a really amazing process. I've seen you evolve. And also, I want to say something about your laugh that I have one other friend on this planet that has your laugh. And when you laugh, it totally transforms. It will transform people around you. And so just keep laughing because it really is healing. You're a beautiful healing woman. So thank you for allowing me this time and this space. It means the world. Thank you. Thank you. I'm looking at how fat my cheeks are today. I could thank my brother for sucking on my face when I was little. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, just um, let us know how we did. Um, like, share. Um, this was just a different way of viewing the charts and the way of viewing the the alignments. And I've seen it written, but. Some people learn by reading. Some people can learn by visual. And the visuals on this were beautiful and amazing. So I'm really grateful for that. And we will see you next time. Thank you. Until